showers and thunderstorms today with strong southwesterly winds to 37 miles per hour. It's a numbers game, especially for the situation that we're in. We're coming off of a high water event here. The outdoors is not a hobby. It's not our passion. It is our way of life. We make the perfect cast, slow our breathing to execute a perfect shot, spend hours researching locations and techniques. Regardless of effort, we fail. This series is not about incredible bites or trophy animals. Our goal here at Day One Outdoors is to educate our viewers, utilizing new technology to offer a different perspective. Watch as we research new areas, plan out the day, and adjust to changing conditions. If not for other experienced outdoorsmen teaching me along the way, I wouldn't have this life. I owe it to them to pass this knowledge along. I owe it to you. Join us here on Day One Outdoors, and let's learn how to become more successful in the field and on the water from day one. So I ended up uh, getting a job in uh, Hereford over here mining and uh, so I moved my whole family over here. We were here for the summer and uh, just kind of fell in love with the country, got to uh, become good friends with, uh, with the ranching family and so we just decided to stay here. So with my job and stuff I can kind of travel around so really wherever I live um, really doesn't matter. One of the big stipulations was with Dakota and the family and the kids and what uh, exactly how that was all going to work and Dakota's really... Um, falling in love with the country. Yeah, might need yogurt. Maybe. Welcome to the beautiful Pacific Northwest. This is something that I've always wanted to do, is go ice fishing. Now, I've done it a few times before, but that was in the Midwest. You don't think ice fishing when you think Oregon and Washington. Well, there's a lot of opportunity here in the Pacific Northwest to go out and target fish, even during the winter time. Especially here in Oregon. There's a new campaign that ODFW started doing called Trout 365. They've opened up a lot of great lakes and reservoirs for you to go out and go target trout year round. I'm joined by Andy Spinks and his son Dakota, and Dakota is gonna be our guide. Now, anytime you're going out to a lake, even when it's covered with ice, number one, you gotta be where the fish are, location. So Dakota, where are we gonna start, buddy? What are we looking for? So we're kind of looking for these gradual points that are coming out, and then uh, once we can kind of get through the ice, we're looking for these uh, transition lines. So it's basically coming from kind of rock and grass, and we're looking for a mud bottom. And that's where those fish are going to be going back and forth. You know, for the most part in ice, these fish, they're going to be sitting in deeper water. That's where it's warmer, actually. You get away from the ice. But that's not where the food is. So they're going to be coming up and cruising flats and areas where they have access to that deep water to come up and come feed, like those Maybe like points. Right. Now you also mentioned that they're gonna be coming up on that change in the bottom, mm -hmm. that mud to rock, that sand to rock. Right. So they're just traveling those edges. Yeah. So how do you start? I mean, looking around us. You can kind of look at the bank lines. There's okay. large rock, yep. and then it'll transition off into some mud and grass there. Okay. And those are good spots to start. And then you can kind of start going with drilling holes and checking the bottom. Gotcha, how do you That's, check the bottom? So you can use either just heavy rock, something to just drop down. And just kind of feel what it, what right. it is, just yeah. telegraph it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically looking at the shoreline will help you determine what to expect down there at depth. Right. You start dumping gear and digging. Yeah. The regulations are, you know, in most lakes and reservoirs, you can get a two pole endorsement. Well, if you're ice fishing, you can fish up to five lines per person. Mm -hmm. We're here to cover water. We're trying to figure out where the fish are traveling. So we should probably start with one in shallow, one medium, one a little bit deeper on this one point yeah. along that transition and just kind of see where these fish are hanging, then we can adjust the holes from there. Yeah, for sure. It kind of has a gradual drop off, and then it's gonna flatten out. Okay. And then it's just gonna be a steady drop all the way to the dam. So. Okay, let's grab that shovel and bring it over here and take a look. So just looking at the shoreline, trying to figure out yeah, where that break is. Thinking probably where that drop off is gonna be. Yeah, there you go, broke through. Might be a little tight getting them out of there. Well, especially, you now this is, looks like it's, I mean, that's, it's breaking through right there. So that's gotta be 10, 12 inches of ice. So we're gonna see, oh, look at this guy. I got a heater so if your hands do get cold. 
It's for the fish. It's for the fish, man. It's for the fish. You were telling me the other day that uh, you actually get bit pretty quick once you open up the hole. Yeah. I was thinking about it and I think, you know, we got all this snow cover over the ice. It's gotta be dark down there. So they're getting a little shot of light coming through, plus all the noise. This has gotta be super loud. Oh yeah. Sound travels really well in water, yeah. especially when it gets trapped like this in the ice. It gets amplified. So how long do you spend in each hole before you move? So it can depend on conditions. Okay. With maybe sunnier weather, they might be a little bit slower. I might take more time. But I think with these overcast conditions and they should be pretty active. If you don't get something in 30 minutes or so, try the next spot. Gotcha. Okay. Well again, it's gonna be nice having your dad here plus you and me and we'll be able to cover some water pretty quick. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, he's got a big one on. Ooh, son. Jeez, that's a tank. That's medium size? I like the sound, they just really draw to it. It's something that's going on and they just want to come and check it out. And I think the sunlight, they've been covered up by the ice and snow, and just like what Cody was saying, the you know, they're, they're ready for springtime, they're starting to get hungry. They're just more lethargic right now, and so as soon as you open it up, I think they're just, I think they're ready to feed. Yeah, we'll start with that garlic, some real heavy scent, get their attention. And this stuff here was made specifically for putting onto marabou and hackle and stuff like that. And that's because it won't ruin it and it'll help keep the action of the lure. Because gotcha. you put on that heavy gel stuff, it just kills it, you lose all your motion. Load it up, dude. Perfect. Okay. We got some catching up to do. Your dad's already beating us. Yeah. Okay, quit screwing around, let's get fishing. I'll go to the... Oh. oh it's got too big of a head start. You gonna let any of us fish? Ah, look at that one. I love the colors on them. Look at the blue bright. Yeah, look at that. It's kind of cool looking fish too. There's not many spots on them yeah. from the dorsal fin forward. Fish. Got great colors on them. Though. I just love that purple sheen to it. Yeah. It's just gorgeous. So look. this lake is actually stocked pretty regularly, like every couple years or so. Every three years, it's just so remote and out in the middle of nowhere that it just doesn't get fished that much. But they're just they're really pretty, and they're all just bright fat. It's just the really fat color fish. and the gill plate. That's just gorgeous. So it's still early in the morning here, but I uh, wouldn't mind keeping one or two of these for lunch. You but betcha. we don't need to keep a ton. You know, these fish do have an adipose fin, but I think that has a lot to do with the fish that are stocked in here naturally reproducing. Sure. And so there's no sense in taking more than what we need, just need enough for lunch. Yep. Bite's been pretty good, so fire that bad boy back in and... Let him go. There you go. <laughs> okay. The little tiny 132nd ounce Maxi jig, <laughs> just tiny little, just downsizing your steelhead jig down to a little trout jig. Just got a little bite there, just barely nibbling on it. Real subtle hit. Oh, there he is. On. Might be a good one. Yep. Right in the corner there. Ooh, quick release. He's back. It's quick though, really subtle hits, so they're just barely biting it. Fishfield is your one stop shop online for the gear you need here in the Pacific Northwest and beyond. From salmon and steelhead, saltwater, trout and kokanee, even crabbing. Visit fishfield.com today to place an order with no sales tax and have the gear you need shipped fast. Fishfield.com, we have what the Northwest Outdoorsman needs. Every once in a while, a new lure comes along that catches every angler's attention. It could be because of all the irresistible colors and finishes or the patented skip beat action. Or maybe it's the wide variety of sizes designed for salmon, trout, walleye, steelhead, mackinac, and more. But just for the record, we know one thing for certain. We didn't design the maglip to catch fishermen. Yakima Bait Company. Good 
just hit it hard. Big fish. There we go. That's what we're looking for right there. There we go. Nice bow. All prettied up, dark backs. Andy and Dakota have already caught fish. I've been running around getting gear ready. What a surprise, right? But one thing that Dakota did mention was how typically your first drop or two is when you're gonna catch your fish. So this is the last hole that I dug. It's a little bit further out towards the point. I'm hoping that this point draws out a little bit further here. I'm gonna take my diamond jig from fish field, drop it down in there, hit the bottom, come up a crank, start working it. And one thing I did notice is that Andy is actually working his jig a little bit faster than Dakota. So we'll see a little bit more action works. Down it goes. How deep is it? Not very deep. There's bottom right. There, come up. What's taking so long? Well, we've been here a whole 10 minutes. We've caught three fish. This is kind of slow. It's taking me all 10 seconds so far. <laughs> and we're doubled up. Oh, I'm on! It's like we got a double or a triple. <laughs> triple! <laughs> Look at that, pretty fish. Oh! There he goes. Did you already let yours go? Yeah. Okay. How's this one compared to yours? It's about the same. It's about the same? Yeah. Dude, these are some awesome fish. Good size. What are yeah. you pliers on the hooking for me? Yeah. So this fish here, I was working the jig kind of fast and hard. And I felt the bite, so I just stopped moving it, and he came back and just smoked it. That little diamond jig with that ice scent on it. They're liking it. Makes me feel better. <laughs> Gosh, man, just the colors on these fish are just amazing. I'm gonna put them in back in your hole. Sweet. Okay, so shallow, mm -hmm. mid depth, on and the deep. offset of the break. Yep. And even. Even deep. Well, so when I drop mine down, uh -huh. it's not that deep. It's actually well, it's pretty not. shallow. Is it? In fact, right. it feels like it's shallower than it is right here. Huh. So it must, there must be a little dip here. Maybe it comes up. Yeah, because it looks like that point extends right there. Mm -hmm. So I think you're fishing off this edge of the point. Okay. Yeah. And I think I'm right on top of it. When I first started looking into filming an ice fishing episode, one of my big, biggest concerns was gear and equipment. Because again, it's not something that we typically have here in Oregon and Washington. So I started doing some research online. And for about a hundred bucks, you can get everything that you're going to need for ice fishing. So it's totally different than say salmon and steelhead or especially bass fishing where you gotta buy thousands upon thousands of dollars of gear, all the boats, everything else. This is something that this time of year from January through even early March, you can come out after you get a nice cold snap and get out on the ice for fairly inexpensive. The rods, this rod here costs eight bucks, real cheap. Just take your basic trout reel that you already have at home somewhere. And if you don't, you can get a nice little trout reel for about 10, 20 bucks. For the line, you need a good strong line. This here is Maxima fluorocarbon, but fluorocarbon is a little bit expensive. So you can just go with the Maxima clear. When we start catching these fish and they start coming up through the ice, you gotta have really strong lines so it doesn't get cut off on the edges. From there, I have a little corky. And that corky is just to prevent from reeling up my swivel up into the first eyelet. And then just a real short section of line here. This is your leader line. This again is just Maxima clear. This is five pound but really it doesn't seem to matter all that much. You can run a little bit thicker stuff. The guys, what they're using over there, they're using the Yakima Bait Maxi Jigs, and they're using anywhere from an eighth ounce to a 32nd ounce. So anywhere in that size range, your small steelhead jigs to your smaller crappie style jigs will work. This one right here is a diamond jig from Fishfield that just came out. It's meant mainly for kokanee, but it works great for trout too. But this one here is just a half ounce, nice small little treble hook on it. It has that uh, Pro Cure Ice Scent on it, the trout, the trophy trout. And all we're doing is just dropping it all the way down to the bottom, letting it hit. There it is. Come up just a little bit. What I like to do is lift my rod up about as far as I want the jig off the bottom, reel down, and then just start working the jig itself. Now I've been watching those two guys and sometimes they're jigging it fast, sometimes they're jigging it slow. I like to start out with just a couple of fast jigs, create a lot of attention, a lot of movement, and then slow it down after that. Now, so far we've been pretty successful, so that's great, but it seems like there's a fair number of fish out here, maybe in a lake or reservoir that may not have as high of a population of trout. You might need to work a little bit harder, but we're gonna keep on playing around with some stuff here today from running bait rigs to different style of jigs, different lures, 
and we're gonna see what works best and just have a lot of fun with this. I've wanted to come out and do ice fishing here in Oregon for a long time and this is, this is a blast. We've only been doing it for about half hour, hour, and we've already got, let's see, two, three, four, five fish. And these are just awesome, awesome quality trout. I'm ready to catch my next one. So we've been fishing here for a little bit and uh, I wanted to some, switch some baits up and see if we can uh, get a little different action going. So I've been using these uh, soft plastics before. They've been working really good. Bright colors mostly. It's kind of murky water, so the visibility isn't that great. So pinks, whites, you know, chartreuse, stuff like that. The smaller jig heads have been working really good. These grub tails give off a lot of action. They're not very big and it's a great meal for them. So it's super easy to get. So uh, we're gonna try and tie on a couple of those and see if they work. So we're at number six or seven now, I believe. They've kind of slowed down here a little bit, but we're getting a few bites here and there. And uh, there's another big rainbow. Pretty fish. That one's a little bit more colored up there. It's another great fish. Tons of color, super green backs, just great fish. Salmon swim up to 3,000 miles to return to their exact place of birth to reproduce. Well, most of the time. So I just had this little tiny insect climb up out of my hole. It was right there. And he came right up out of the water and up onto the ice here. This has to be what these fish are eating for the most part. So even though the lake is completely covered up with ice and snow, they still have a food source down at depth. Most lakes and reservoirs also have little feeder streams and springs that pop up, which will bring in new food sources. And that's why most of the fish that you're seeing caught here today are pretty thick. They're healthy, they're nice and fat. So even though you think wintertime fish are lethargic, they're not eating much, they're trying to conserve energy, you can find some of the best bites you've ever had all year long during ice fishing season. So don't be afraid just because this weather to come out and get on a great bite like what we're experiencing today. This has been a lot of fun. Now we won't come back. I'm waiting for that tip up to go because it does seem like they come through in groups. Pop up just went. <laughs> Never used one before. Oh, doubled up. Ooh. Andy's got one. Oh, just missed. Okay, let's see how this works. And triple. Joe's got one too. Hot bite, boys. <laughs> That's awesome. So, again, we're allowed up to five rods per person if you had that two pull endorsement. And check this out. This is something that Buzz Ramsey actually taught me. You put a little corky in front of your treble hook with your dough bait. Now, most people say that the dough bait, your power bait, will float enough. Well, what this allows us to do is by running a smaller bait, you can see how barely that fish is hooked. If I ran enough dough bait to get that bait to float up that hook, we probably would have not got this fish. But because I added the corky, I was able to use less bait and keep those hook points exposed there he is. That is freaking cool. That's awesome. Bye, Felicia. So we just kind of had a big wave of them come through and all three of us hooked up almost at the same exact time. And we think these fish are just cruising around and almost making a circle and coming in little waves like that. So it's pretty cool. They can all just come in a wave like that and you can hook up that fast. It can be kind of a dead bite and then all of a sudden it can uh, get really quick. 
getting this little contraption set up here right now. It's called the tip up. They use these a lot in the Midwest. And again, here in Oregon, we're allowed to use up to five lines per person if you have a two rod endorsement when you're ice fishing. I've only added, you know, probably 20 feet of line here. So we're not gonna be fishing much deeper than that. I'm spooling it up, getting it ready to drop into the hole. You can see the line right there on the spool. That is the 10 pound Maxima Blue. I went a little bit heavier because again, if you're not right next to it, this line's gonna be rubbing up against the ice. You need a good strong line for it. Then down to a weight. Again, this is overkill. In fact, what would probably work better is just an egg sinker on a slip setup. Then just a, about a half ounce, three quarter ounce weight. Then about 18 inches down to that small corky and power bait setup. And I'm telling you, that trick that Buzz showed me there with that corky in front of the power bait, what it does is it makes that bait sit perpendicular in the water. So that way these fish can come up and bite it on a side profile. Before, when you had to use a lot of extra bait and not have those hook points exposed, they're coming in and you'd almost have to have them feed down to grab it. But because we're now able to use less bait, the hook points are exposed. We're gonna get a better hookup ratio. That corky helps keep it floating perpendicular and the fish swim up and get a nice side profile and we get a better hookup to land ratio. So we're gonna go over to one of our holes and I'll show you how to set up. Maybe, if I can figure it out. So again, ice fishing doesn't have to be too expensive. For a hundred bucks, you can get an ice fishing rod, a reel, line, all the gear that you're gonna need, plus a couple of these tip-ups and a hand auger. What we're gonna start by doing is put our bait in the water, make sure it's floating. Yep, looking good. Slowly drop the weight in, make sure nothing's tangled up. And then I'm gonna slowly let some line off the spool here until I feel it tap bottom. Nice and slow, we don't want our line getting tangled up. Almost there. There's bottom right there. See the line starting to coil? So now what we're gonna do is keep it just tight enough, and spin it on down. There it is, you barely feel the pressure of the weight. Spool it counterclockwise here. Keep it tight. Okay, so it's spooling counterclockwise, which means when fish bites, it's gonna pull it clockwise. So there's a notch right here. I'm gonna put it inside like so and slide it up, create that tension. So that way when the fish bites, pull it off, boom. Trap is set, tip up pops up. We got a fish on, come running over. Pull the line. <laughs> Rise was walking over. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Jeez, whoa. Oh, did he just break me off? No, he's there. Wow, this, this is a good fish. Whoa, jeez. It's hard fighting with your hand. Well, he's fighting pretty hard. It's just like marlin fishing, wiring them in. Just like marlin fishing. Except it's a 12 inch trout. <laughs> there he is. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slide up through here, buddy. Look at him roll around down there. Whew, wow. Whoa, jeez, he's stripping line. <laughs> Don't break me off on the ice. Don't, whoa, rolling all over the place. <laughs> Come to the light. Come to the light. He's a hard fighter. He's not huge, but he's good. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Dude, he's not that much different than the other ones. Just a hard fighter. Long fish. Chip up. Nice. <laughs> I was just walking over to it to move it. Check that bad boy out. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> nice. So it knock him out. That right there is gonna be a perfect one for lunch. That's awesome. Get over here, little bird. Gosh, the colors, you just cannot describe how beautiful that is. Just that purplish pink sheen to him. That is just cool. There he goes. <laughs> so awesome. And that guy, eight the diamond jig so even though i've been running this triple rig and they have been keying in on those salmon eggs this guy ate that new little diamond jig there see he was an aggressive fish this one here this color has a little bit of glow to it too and that murky water might have helped i don't know made me feel better though
strong enough, good stool there. Mm -hmm. So if you want, you just separate it on the back. The back side right there, you just pull the little bottle opener. Just pull this off. Out. Yeah, slide that out. There you go, Jens. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, you bet. Eat up. I'll keep cooking. And Trent catches fish and keeps on teasing me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can't get much more perfect day than this right here. It's a little bit of snow. Fishing's fantastic. Fresh trout. Good company. It's a good day. Caught a lot of fish. I don't know if I'm quite yet to teaching Cody, but maybe someday. You know, we we happen to find this place is not on most maps, and we happen to find this through some gentlemen that uh, actually brought us out here, some local people. You know, and they brought us out. We fished it a couple times, and we didn't do very good. And Dakota, he just gets on the internet and starts researching. And he, he learns how to read the landscape. He learns how to look what's in the water. Um, it's all self-taught. There's nobody that's, that's really showed him anything or how to fish. Um, everything that he's done, he's taught himself, you know. I mean, it's one thing to put a lure on and just throw it out there in the water and see what you can do. But 99% of the time, he's the one that's catching fish out of everybody.